Hi, my name is Jim. Today, I'd like to talk with you about the CSS box sizing property. Specifically, I'd like to introduce you to BorderBox. BorderBox is a new value included in the CSS3 spec, and I'm confident that when we're done here, you'll want to start using this feature today on all your projects. To get started, let's take a look at the default value for box sizing, content box. The box sizing property defines how the height, width, padding, and border of HTML elements are rendered. Let's set the width of a div to say 300 pixels. If we add 20 pixels of padding to the div, that padding is added to the elements outside. So our div is now 340 pixels wide. Then we add a one pixel border to our div and we can see that the element expands a little bit more. Anyone who's worked with this knows this model just doesn't make sense. This is where the border box value comes in. The box sizing spec tells us that any padding or border specified on the elements is laid out and drawn inside the specified width and height. So let's look at how the styles from our first div translate to a border box div. You'll see our 20 pixel padding is added to the inside of the div instead of the outside. The same holds true with our border. So even after the addition of padding and a border, our div is still 300 pixels wide. Border box makes sense, and it creates tons of opportunities for our page layouts. I find it particularly useful when dealing with responsive designs and widths set as percentages. Let's look at a couple examples. I'm going to create a form for a mobile device. So let's start with the HTML markup. We've got a couple headlines. We have a form with a text area. I pre-populated the text. Uh, plus a submit button. Now if we switch over to our CSS, we want our form elements to expand the whole page. So we're going to go set the width to 100% and we'll give the text area a height of 150 pixels. So we switch over to our browser and we're going to set that in the dimensions of a mobile phone. You can see here's our form and it expands the way we want it to. But our, our text area is a little tight so let's add a little bit of padding to uh, give that a little more spacious look, especially for a mobile device. So we'll go padding 8 pixels and we switch back over to our browser. The padding looks great but we can see now that our text area is breaking outside of its parent container. So this is happening because the default value for the box size property is content box. However, if we go back to our CSS and we add box sizing border box we can switch over to our browser again and we can see that our text area is there, the padding's around, and then it's scaling the way we want it to. Easy enough, right? So let's look at one more example using the max width property. We want to grab we want our images to scale up and down to fit the device being used. So first let's grab an image and add it to our HTML. So I went and got a place kitten image and we'll throw that in there and we want to add a max width of 100% to all our images to prevent them from breaking outside of the parent container so let's go max width um, 100% now if we come back to our browser refresh we can see that we have a good looking image and it responds nicely with the browser resize but let's say we wanted to add a nice looking border. So we'll go and add a background color. We'll add a border to the outside. And we'll add some padding. Let's go five pixels of padding. If we switch back to our browser, we refresh. We got a nice looking border, but again, we can see that our image is now breaking outside of the parent container, even though we said max width. Fortunately, our border box solution will work great right here. So let's go back to our CSS and we'll go box sizing border box. And we come back to our page, refresh. Now we can see we have a nice responsive image, the great looking border that doesn't break our layout. We've been building websites with a box model that's confusing and far from intuitive. The good news is that's changing with the implementation of border box. We've only brushed the surface of how it can be used, but with solid browser support, we can start utilizing BorderBox in our projects right away. So I challenge you to use it on your next project. 
That's all we have for today. In our next lesson, we'll talk about using border box within grid systems. Until then, thanks for joining me. See you next time.